According to Setusen Nasse, modern man lives on the periphery of the existential circle, with the result that he can only see things from his own peripheral point of view, not from the center of the circle. Nasser maintains, modern man has simply forgotten who he is. Living on the periphery of his own circle of existence, he has been able to gain a qualitatively superficial but quantitatively staggering knowledge of the world. Nasser's view of divinity and its relationship to perennial philosophy cannot be separated from his view of tradition. Nasser always tries to remind modern man to return to tradition because he considers modern man to have forgotten who he actually is. It is significant to note that the term tradition doesn't refer to something traditional or something in a form contradictory to modernity. However, indeed, tradition is substantively opposed to the modern worldview. During the past few decades, many people have been attracted to the term tradition. In Schoen's words, tradition is not a childish and outmoded mythology but a science that is terribly real. According to Nasser, it is truth or divine principles revealed to humans, including the entire cosmos through elected figures such as prophets, avatars, messengers, logos, or other transmitting agencies. The usage of the term tradition in the sense understood in the present study came to the full in the Western civilization at the moment of the final phase of the desacralization of both knowledge of the world which surrounded modern man. The formulation of the traditional point of view was a response of the sacred, which is both the alpha and the omega of human existence, to the elegy of doom of modern man lost in a word depleted of the sacred and therefore of meaning. Tradition Tradition means truths or principles of a divine origin revealed or unveiled to mankind and, in fact, a whole cosmic sector through various figures along with all the ramifications and applications of these principles in different realms including law and social structure, art, symbolism, the sciences, and embracing of course supreme knowledge along with the means for its attainment. The notion of tradition is more related to the perennial philosophy that exists at the heart of every religion, which is none other than Sophia considered the pinnacle of the human life both in the East and in the West. This eternal wisdom is the main component of the concept of tradition, which is Sophia Perennis in the Western tradition. In Hinduism, it is called Sanatana Dharma, and in Islam, it is called Hikmah al khalida However, Nasa still distinguishes religion from tradition. He states, in this sense, tradition is a more general concept of embracing religion, as the Arabic term Adin means at once tradition and religion in its most universal sense, while religion, as used in its widest sense, is understood by some to include the application of its revealed principles and its later historical unfolding so that it would in turn embrace what we mean by tradition although the traditional point of view is not identical with the religious. In relation to the Islamic teaching, Islam views that the doctrine of Tawhid is not only a message belonging to Islam but also as the heart or core of every religion. Revelation for Islam means a reaffirmation of the doctrine of Tawhid which had been previously established by religions that preceded the prophethood of Muhammad. Because the revelation comes down to different people, the languages used to express it are also different even though the contents and substance remain the same. In a general sense, tradition is also considered to include the principles that bind humans to heaven. It is the revealed principles themselves which function to bind humans to the origin, so that tradition implies the truth rooted in the nature of reality. Tradition as well as religion always contains truth and presence simultaneously. It concerns the knowing subjects and the known object. Inevitably, tradition comes from the source to which everything returns. Therefore, it is always related to the elements of revelation and religion, to the sacred, to continuity and regularity of transmission of the truth, to authority, to the idea of orthodoxy, to the exoteric and esoteric as well as to the spiritual life, the arts and science. Tradition comes from the source from which everything originates and to which everything returns. It thus embraces all things like the breath of the compassionate which according to the Sufis is the very root of existence itself. 
So living in the traditional perspective is breathing in a world where human beings are constantly in touch with a reality that goes beyond themselves. The reality that becomes the source from which they derive principles, truth, forms, and other elements that determine the nature of their existence. It takes place through a transmission that brings the reality of the tradition concerned into the lives of each of its members from each generation according to their capacity and end, and guarantees the durability of its truth from infiltration that is the nature of everything affected by the word of generation and corruption. In a certain point of view, there is only one tradition that is the only primordial tradition. It is the truth which is the essence and origin of all reality. It is important to note that the traditional perspective is closely related to the concept of the sacred. It means to speak of the traditional perspective is to speak of the sacred and define its meaning. In fact, in a certain sense, the sacred, like truth and being, is to principle and elementary to be defined in a universal logical categories, either by genus or by other special differentiations. The sacred exists in the being itself, and man naturally has the ability to know as he can distinguish between the real and the unreal. However, modern men have been conditioned in such a way that this natural ability has almost vanished. Perhaps the most immediate way to approach the meaning of it is to relate it to the immutable as well as the unmoved and the eternal mover. The eternal is none other than the sacred itself. The sacred is the source of tradition and what is traditional cannot be separated from the sacred. Anyone who doesn't have the ability to feel the sacred won't be able to use the traditional perspective because traditional man is inseparable from the sacred. Thus, the traditional perspective is the opposite of the worldview of modernism and secularism. This traditional principle has led traditionalists to believe that all religions are different theophanies of the same truth. Meanwhile, the knowledge of modern man has created a gulf between humans from their spiritual happiness. As a result, spiritual happiness is almost beyond the reach of human reason. For Nasser, the notion of materialism in modernism is actually the implication of Descartes' philosophy. Cogito ego sum, I think therefore I am. Nasser expounds what Descartes did although he made use of this traditional symbol of the tree and that the sciences grew out of metaphysics is that he substituted rationalism based on human judgment for intellection. The dictum cogito ego sum means I think, therefore I am. The I and the therefore that comes from the I as ordinary human consciousness in this statement is the ultimate criterion that determines the truth and even being and existence. All knowledge for Descartes flows from this assertion, which implies actually the cutting off of what Descartes calls metaphysics for whatever transcends the individual I. Descartes, by asserting what he did, cut himself off from traditional metaphysics, from the perennial philosophy which considers the origins of metaphysics to be not the I that can doubt a transcendent reality and then say that I think and that I cannot doubt my thinking. But what Hindu metaphysics called Atman, the Supreme Self, that is, what we would call the Divine Reality as well as the Buddha or the Divine Intellect. It is this substitution of human reason for the Divine Intellect and the individual I for the Supreme Self in Descartes that marks the beginning of modern philosophy and the break between, intellectually speaking, modernism and traditional philosophy. It is this notion that influenced the modern worldview where the traditional perspective is increasingly getting out of place. In this case, Nasser views how medieval Western philosophy, which he calls the Christian tradition, began to have crumbled due to the emergence of materialism that was built after the emergence of the theories of Copernicus and Galileo. Modernism in the eyes of the West essentially gives birth to upward harmony amongst human beings since it offers freedom. A religion is then categorized as a shackling concept because modern humans are eager to shape and create their world without the help of any supernatural ideas. 
Moreover, modernism brings a negation of life and gives birth to a vigilance that many thinkers are wary of as the big imperialist. It then deprives of the main foundation in creating the harmony trimmed off by modern humans. So according to Nasser, it is the time for tradition to be revived as the main foundation of civilization that restores the disconnection of the two elements of life, the sacred and the profane. For more than two centuries, modernism has been sweeping the Islamic world. It's offering the idea of materialism comes to infiltrate Islamic spirituality. The impact is the erosion of the identity of Islam, which has also been maintained for a long time. Gradually, Muslims become a group of people who have lost their identity. Modernism is then for Nasser a serious threat to the establishment of Islamic civilization which always relies on the traditional perspective. For this reason, traditional perspective presupposes the emergence of a progressive word that is embodied by human awareness of the sacred in the profane. Nasser believes that modern humans can live with traditional perspective which connects everything in the world to the sacred. The goodness of modernism, according to Nasser, will actually be blemished if modern man ignores the sacred. Nasser clearly demonstrates how crucial the traditional perspective is, so that according to him it needs to be revived to carry out the holy assignments of saving people from the crisis of the modern world. Basically, traditional perspective arises as a direct result of hostility and hatred of the modern enlightened reason towards the sacred and its failure to understand the nature of truth or the truth and the real. I'll see you next time.